Hello YouTube, I am Jay and this will be my first part in the discussion of how to filter your water in your aquariums. Now, as you know, I do have a turtle tank which I have not done a water change for two years. And I do want to make videos explaining how I am able to achieve a truly no water change tank. But before I do that, I feel like I need to cover the basics of filtration first. So if I just made a video right away on how I do no water changes, then people won't really understand how it works because they don't really understand the basic stuff and the conventional ways filtration work. So first, I feel like I have to cover the basics of filtration before I move on to the no water change stuff. So basically, I have a no water change tank, which is truly a no water change tank in that I don't have like an automatic water change system, I just don't do water changes and I only add water for topping up evaporation. And before I can explain that, I will explain some basic concepts. And you may think you already know this stuff, but I feel like I want, there are some topics that I would like to discuss that I feel like people don't really talk about despite the fact that they're super super important. And like people have a very basic understanding, most people I feel like, about like, oh, ammonia, they turn into nitrates and stuff like that, there's bacteria involved, but people don't really understand why it works and how it works, and a lot of thing that I think is omitted in the discussion of filtration is understanding the ecology of the tank, what goes in and what comes out and what happens in between. So these are things that I'd like to discuss in this uh, Filtration Basics series. So let's get started. In this first part, I'll be discussing why you need filtration and uh, what is the source of the water pollution. And uh, in order to explain this, I'm going to have to explain the basic ecology of the tank. So let's start off. Why do you need filtration? Well, most people have a pretty good understanding of this, and that is the fish the tank are gonna make fish poop and that stuff is toxic to the fish and that kills your fish so in order to prevent this stuff from killing your fish you run it through a filter and then you get clean water so your fish don't die so basically what most people understand is that the reason your water gets dirty is because you have fish in there, the fish are pooping in the water, so the water gets dirty. The toxins build up and that kills your fish. So when, a people ask, uh, when I ask people, uh, what do you think is the source of pollution for the water in your aquariums, most people say, oh, it's because of the fish. If you have big fish, you have big pollution. If you have small fish, you don't have that much. And it's the fish poop that you have to get rid of. Well, that's kind of only halfway right. Because the true source of pollution for your aquariums is your food. That's right, because in order to get that fish to produce the poop, the fish first has to eat the fish food that you are feeding them. And it is not the poop that is the problem, it is the food you're adding. This is your source of pollution. Your fish are not polluting the water, your poop are not polluting the water, it is only indirect. The direct source of pollution in your tank is the food that you're adding. And this, I believe, is very important to understand. So let me further illustrate this point. So let's say this is your fish food, right? So you have one fish in this tank. So the fish eats this food and produces some, some poop, right? So what happens in between? Basically, your fish are not producing pollution, they are reducing the pollution. Because, let's say you have this huge piece of food, right? And the fish eats it. What happens to that food? The fish uses up this to produce energy, and some is lost as heat, and some goes to growth, and let's say your fish are breeding, and you also have reproduction. So basically, if you start off with this size of potential pollutants, as it passes through the fish, it gets reduced. It's smaller now. 
because the fish used up the energy, some of the energy was lost as heat, some of the food is actually inside the fish, it's become part of the fish now in terms of the fish proteins that it made, it comes from the food. So some of this food, by being processed to, uh, by the fish, it becomes less uh, able to pollute the water. There's less of it remaining after it gets processed by the fish. All right. So your fish are not uh, helping this food pollute the water. It is actually helping you clean it up. So let's say you're feeding a tank the exact same amount of food as above. Let's say instead of one fish, you have same sized fish, but except this time you have three. So what's going to happen here? The fish are going to eat up the food, and it's going to turn into poop, right? So because you have three fish, you should have more pollution, right? Well, you're wrong because you fed a relatively same amount, same amount of food here. So as the food is processed by the three fish, it again gets reduced to a relatively small amount. It becomes less. So just because you have more fish doesn't mean you end up with more pollution. You get it? Actually having more fish may actually help you reduce the pollution. Because let's say this one fish isn't able to eat up all this food. There's gonna be some food that gets eaten and there's leftover food that is unprocessed and it is 100% directly contributing to the end product which is polluting your water. But if let's say you have three fish and they eat up 100% of the food, 100% of the food is processed by the fish and the pollution that it is able to produce is reduced. So your fish is actually helping clean up the water. Let's say in this tank you have no fish. There's nothing. 100% of this is unprocessed and it goes right away producing a ton of pollution for your water. So the source of the pollution is the food. As long as you're feeding the same amount of food, it doesn't really matter how many fish you have, assuming they're eating all of the food. The end product, in terms of how much the tank gets dirty, will be relatively similar. And having a uh, no fish in the tank and you're adding the same amount of food, that's going to produce the most pollution. I mean, everybody knows that uneaten food is bad for your tanks, right? That's why. Because uneaten food is not processed by your fish, and thus, it has the highest potential to make your water dirty and kill your fish. So let me illustrate this point further. So how much filtration do you need for your tank? What should I measure to know that? Basically, how much filtration you need is dependent on how much food you're feeding. Um, the way a lot of filters are sold in the aquarium hobby, um, people will say like, oh, you have a tank that is this size, so you should have a filter that is rated for that whatever size filter, of whatever size tank. And that's really kind of not accurate because it doesn't really matter how big your tank is. What really matters is how much food you're putting into that tank. So let me illustrate. Let's say you have two exactly same size tanks with two exactly same uh, number of fish, same fish, same size. The only difference is you're feeding this tank a lot of food, and this tank you're feeding not as much. Which tank will need more filtration? Well, this small amount of food, as it gets processed by the fish, is going to turn into a certain amount of poop, right? This is how much that needs to be processed. So you can process this water through a small filter, and you're gonna get clean water. Or if you're feeding a lot more food. So you'll get the feed, let's say the feed, a fish eats up all of the food, and you get a happier fish, except you're gonna get a lot more poop here, right? So you're going to need a larger filter to process all of this and turn it into clean water. So even though you have the same size tank, same species of fish, same size fish, this tank will need a larger filter because you're feeding it more. A lot of people don't seem to get this. They say, oh, I have this size tank with like this many fish so I can uh, get away with this filter. 
which is kind of true because depending on how many fish you have that's gonna affect how much you're feeding them but even if you have the exact same setup if you cut back on the feeding and just feed what they need instead of power feeding them you can dramatically reduce how much filtration you need that brings me that brings me to final point here so the amount of filtration you need is directly dependent on the food the more food you're feeding the more filtration you're gonna need so the direct thing that affects how much filtration you need is the food of course how much food you're gonna need to feed will be affected by tank size number of fish size of the fish and type of fish because some fish need more food and if you have more fish you're gonna tend to need more food right but these are not direct variables what directly affects how much filtration you need is how much food you're feeding. So that is the basic ecology of the tank. Why you need filters? Because you're adding food to the tank and you need the filters to clean up that food. And your fish, they're not helping pollute the tank, they're cleaning up that food by eating them and processing, and processing them, reducing the amount of pollution the food is able to produce. So that is a uh, basics of the filtration in terms of why you need filtration and how much filtration you will need basically how much filtration you need depends on the food you're feeding so that will be it for part one of the series in part two i'll be discussing uh, biological and mechanical filtration and how it works and that'll be it for today thank you for watching